<laughs> Welcome to the Babylon Pastors Podcast. Yeah. How are you? All You're right. Talking, so you need to wear a mask right now. Uh, I, just, am I am I going to translate the Corona uh, through? I think it the, goes through microphone cords. Goes through microphone cords all the way, like over internet too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Um. Sorry. I mean, you already have it at that point. If this is the case, so I mean, we're gonna get fact checked and taken down because that's not accurate. <laughs> so the whole video video will be banned. Neither is any of the other stuff that gets fact checked and taken down. <laughs> so, welcome. Today is November 11th. It's a Wednesday. Uh, do you guys know what the outcome of the election is yet? Because <laughs> I'm not sure. If you do, we're from the past. We don't know. Mm -hmm. ah, we're recording from October. Welcome to the past. We're speaking into the future. Today is November 11th. Welcome to the Babylon Pastors Podcast. Second episode of this month in which we talk about cringy christian things last week was a, a painful episode rob it was ah uh, uh, they got a week off yeah this is a couple minutes for us and uh my brain hurts i think my brain's gonna hurt more with this episode <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's a bad deal this this is as bad as last week was, this one, uh, some of the things that I found might be even a little, um, like, you know, I don't know what everyone's differing definitions of heresy is, but... <laughs> I was about to say, you know, you're saying that the Christian movie industry wasn't theologically grounded? No, not really. You should see some of next week's stuff that I found. <laughs> Ah, that's going to be really bad. No, oh. um, it, move, Christian movies are definitely as bad as the music, what used to be, the music video stuff. Yeah. It's really the same thing, only you have to endure it for longer periods of time. Yeah, hours. Um, yeah. In fact, yeah, the first and thing... Some of them have sequels. You know, some, so <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk about the Omega Code here. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Omega Code. I grew up... So before me and Rob went to church together, I went to a Baptist church. And in case you don't know, I'm sure Baptist church varied uh, in the early 90s. But the Baptist church I particularly went to was very obsessed with end times, revelation, prophecy, all of that stuff. So I uh, got a good taste of that early on. Omega Code was part of that. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I want to show you, before we get too far into uh, to the list of Christian mov movies uh, during this time, I want to give you a taste of, um, a bad taste probably, of exactly what was happening as far as being promoted. Okay, so here is, and it's only, it's only two minutes, so I think uh, this will give you a really good setup for what we're going to talk about here. This is the Omega Code... <laughs> By the way, the Omega Code apparently had a sequel that I was totally unaware of. There's an Omega Code 2. I yes. don't know. I don't know how because the first Omega Code was like literally the end of the world, you know, the Antichrist. So I don't know how you do a second one of those, but they did. So yes. let me pull up here, full screen this for everybody. Here, <laughs> no, I can't, I can't wait for you to see this. Here we go. Providence. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't hear it. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. You can't hear it at all? No. Oh, okay, guys, hold on. I'm sorry. Oh, man, I'm glad I caught that in the beginning. Yeah. Because okay. this is not something you want to miss, folks. No, you really don't. You, you definitely want to have... I bet I didn't click the right button. I didn't click the right button. That's my fault. Okay, here we go. We're going to try this again. Hey, welcome to Doing a Podcast on the Fly Learning Technology. Boom, baby. We are innovators. <laughs> there we okay, go. Now, on right. the eve of the new millennium. Somebody out there say change. change. That's right. Change. The truth about the... Was that Elevation Church? No, I'm sorry. Ancient <laughs> prophecies is about to be revealed. You and I, we have a higher calling. The warnings that can't be ignored. Early tests are confirming that the ocean's molecular structure has somehow mutated. The answers the world has... 
I'm definitely, I'm so sad that we don't currently have holographic technology. I was told as a child we would, and we don't. So, bummer. It's been waiting for. I need you to be my spokesman for this new world. My prophet. And the power. I'm sorry, that wasn't Elevation, that's Bethel. That will set us <laughs> free. There is a war going on between angels of light and dark. Or destroy all mankind. Oh no! We are recanting our support and declaring you a heretic! Who will hold the power in the new millennium? I want a quick strategic nuclear strike. It's literally outrunning the truck. Prepare oh. yourself. For the revelations. Oh, no. Of the code. I was Judas, it's betraying Christ guys. to be crucified. I was Hitler, leading millions to the slaughter. I died so that you might live. Casper Van Dien. That was somebody else. Michael York. <laughs> okay, we're good. Oh, no. What are you oh no? I, I, I cut I cut it and I couldn't find how to stop it. <laughs> I stopped I stopped the screen share, but it kept going. Like it just wouldn't stop playing. Yep, that's how it <sighs> makes you feel. Yeah. So there there is a little taste of it. And that was here, here's the thing. Here, that wasn't a joke. Like that nope. was le- that was a legit And you know that that's wrong because the Antichrist is Nikolai Carpathia. Which is maybe one of the next movies we'll show you. <laughs> so uh, the other ones we're going to look at, I'm sure Left Behind is on your list over there. Uh, yeah, that's I'm what I'm talking about. Yeah. So um, which and here's the thing. I don't remember which came first. If the, it was the Omega Code or Left Be. Somebody was riding somebody's coattails here. Um, I'm going to guess, if I had to guess, the Omega Code came after Left Behind. Because it was kind of like, you know, oh, hey, this is a big thing. We can make money off this. So then somebody was like, let's do the Omega Code. Everybody's talking about the apocalypse. Yeah, okay. We- so, um, the Omega Code came out October 15th, 1999. And Left Behind came out September 4th. In the year 2000. What? Yeah. I was totally wrong. Uh, that's what I thought, too. I well, sometimes you, you got you to you know, have crappy mm. Christian movies wow. that crawl before you can have crappy Christian movies that walk. So, Or walk three steps and fall, <laughs> you got- which is more accurate. There. Yeah. yeah, it's true. It's within the analogy. All right. So, obviously, um, I, I, a lot of... The Christian movies, the early Christian movies, like that came from this time, so the '90s, like the late '90s, were all focused on the apocalypse. Because, hey, do you remember Y2K? I mean, some of you will not remember this. You weren't even born yet, but everybody oh, was yeah. freaking out about Y2K. Generators were bought, like <laughs> food. It was the end of the world, bro. Yeah, everyone thought for sure that the computers were going to flip back over to 1900, lose their computer chip mind, not know what to do, and just shut down. Like, that's how confident we were in technology. <laughs> so they could have yep. figured out a year. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a bad deal. Yeah, and then we figured out that, oh, we don't have to worry, like, when, you know, <laughs> whenever, you know, 2010 came, we didn't have to worry about the computers thinking that it was 1910. So we were fine. We'd already been through that panic, our stupidity, I would like to say it lessened, but it just kind of moved, I guess, to other things. But <laughs> these were the kind of movies yeah. that were produced. So what other golden gems have you found over there? Obviously left behind. Yeah, left behind is a pretty rad one. You know what I what I will say first of all is uh the um okay. So <laughs> I I had forgot. I mean, they're the obvious left behinds, right? That I think of when I think about okay, what Christian mm-hmm. movies were there? Then like pretty much everything but growing pains that he was in uh, oh, after yeah. that, right? I mean, pretty much. Um, mm-hmm. But 
when I looked, I looked on Wikipedia. I found a Wikipedia article that had, I think it's actually just called Christian films or something. Um, and there are so many, like Braveheart is on there. And I feel like Braveheart is not a distinctively Christian film. Hold on. Right? Bra- they have Braveheart listed as a Christian movie? Okay, it's, it says list of Christian films. That's the Wikipedia article. And there are, let's see, uh, there are a bunch of dandy ones here. Um, <laughs> dandy. I love, I love the classification. Yeah. Gettysburg, back in, the, back in the day. I don't understand Braveheart. what Gettysburg is a Christian movie. Braveheart, let's see. Um, there was another one that I saw that I was like, what? Uh, the Patriot. Also not a distinctly Christian yeah. movie. You know, what's really bad is like, I wish we could claim them because they were all well done. Well, yeah, know? that's true. Be like, well, like, that was, <laughs> it, it would have upped the, you know, the, the quality you know, level the dial would have been. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that cinematography and actual, yeah. <laughs> actual dialogue. Oh, they got Mel Gibson in this one. Wow. Hold on. Actually, maybe that, those were Mel Gibson. <laughs> that I was about to say, maybe that's what classifies a Christian yeah. movie from yeah. the outside. Oh. Like from like the Christ, these must be Christian films. Exactly. Like from yeah. a CNN perspective, yeah. they're like, oh, Mel Gibson's a Catholic. So we'll throw his movies yep, in yep. there too. Absolutely. All right. Solid so, foundation. Now, unlike here, here's the thing that I, when I, you know, put my, my vast research into this episode, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing I did find that was different was that while Christian music videos and really Christian music, there's not, here's, let's be honest, in the last episode we didn't talk about it a lot, but they're not really distinctly Christian music anymore. A lot of that would be classified as worship music. Yeah. Now, I mean, you have some K-Love stuff, but in general, even like the casting crowns of the world are moving more toward like worship music or songs that you'll sing in church yep. kind of thing. Uh, but Christian movies, they didn't get the note. <laughs> The memo was not passed, so they're still being made. So we have like the cringy, like the really cringy ones, like Omega Code, and then we have obviously like the Left Behind, which is still an anomaly to me. I mean, how many books were sold of Left Behind to like every Baptist mom ever? Oh yeah, or not even Baptist moms. I mean, that was when we were in church together too. So that was like I, I had the whole it. series. Yeah, within the yeah. So it's probably not. It was probably cross denomination there. Yeah, that was back when I was pre millennial. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing too. So the whole, the whole premise. I mean, that that took it. Uh, that would have taken the temperature of. <laughs> oh, you! I I am so using what you just did as the thumbnail of this episode. <laughs> the title of "Are You Pre Mill?" Uh, <laughs> Rob space right at the camera. Um, <laughs> oh man but hey that's a good that's a good point though i mean that took that's the temperature of really eschatology in what the early 2000s was oh, just yeah. yep. pre-mill all over the place um there was no you didn't see no post-mill or all millennial movies being coming out there at all uh by any of the movie industry but then you move on to more recent um or recent films do you have any old films still that's on that list that you saw um not really i mean pretty much the left behind films the omega code 2 uh, uh you know, you know I, i'm curious but also sad so i don't think i'll look into that but <laughs> yeah there there were a lot of those that uh like you said it was a real like major flavor in christian film back then because well, we thought the world was gonna end so yeah. they were like we got to get these last couple dollars in before god right. comes back before jesus comes back you know also weird thought there what were we what were what were we thinking jesus is coming back let's get a lot of money (laughs) let's not worry about evangelizing (laughs) the world let's make a bunch of crap trash movies well the idea is michael sorry yes you you really want to use all the artistic bones in your body to warn people so that they don't get left behind dun, dun, dun. there you go nice <laughs> Catch line. but then obviously uh the world didn't end in the 2000s which i mean i'm 
you know, I'm pretty happy about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, I got married later. I have, I had kids later. Hey, a lot of benefits for me. Uh, because I didn't have a know, beard then. Well, I wasn't able to grow a beard then. I was super. Probably. Yeah. Me neither, but we don't, that's have to a whole nother, that. that's a whole nother episode of the disappointment that God, Hey, tell me he can't come through. I got a beard now. So, <laughs> tell me he can't. So, but then we move on. Your beard is much more luscious than mine. I'll just give you that. Um, your beard is about as luscious as that Ray Boltz mullet we saw in the last episode. Oh, man. Just on the opposite side of your, opposite side of your head. Uh, Don't listen to him, Charles. So, sorry, Mr. Spurgeon. I apologize. Uh, but then we have more movies, more recent movies. All right. So we have yeah. things like uh, God is not dead. Um, God is not dead too. God is still not dead. God is light in the darkness. <laughs> Are there more than that? I feel like the God, you know, you know, me and my, me and Christina were talking about this. I feel like the God is not dead series is kind of like the left or uh, the, uh, what was that movie about the dinosaurs lost? Um, oh, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, land Before Time. Lost Land Before Time. I feel yeah. like that's the, the Christian land equivalent of Land Before Time. time. 48. <laughs> We're still not dead. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like that's the Christian equivalent because they're just like, hey, and this is what happens with Christian movies too, is we tend to be like, oh, uh, people paid for that. Let's, let's keep milking the, uh, that teat of money until we just can't get any more out. And if you can't get any more out of it, you just take the same actors and then you shove them in a different movie because, you know, they made well, us money yeah. last time. Kurt Cameron, whatever that, uh, what is her name? Priscilla something. She's in a bunch of them. She's in Shire. War Room. Yeah. Yeah. Priscilla Shire. Over, uh, Overcomer. She's in that one. Um, Facing the Giants. Facing the Giants. Yep. That's, There's yep. one. Um, Evan Almighty is on here. No. Get out of here guys hold on let's okay. take this moment just to clarify there are <laughs> there, there are theologically bad movies that come from within christianity which is sad enough and then there's theologically bad movies that come from outside of christianity such as evan almighty or bruce almighty you know i didn't realize this but uh fireproof was made after facing the giants uh. Not that that matters. No one here's watched either. Nobody oh, listening so, has seen either. Hold on. I guarantee you there are people, maybe, <laughs> very slim <laughs> chance, that have watched Fireproof and also bought the, uh, bought the, uh, the 30 day devotional that uh, was promoted with Fireproof about 30 mm -hmm. days of, of devotion and marriage. Yeah. Well, what was it called? Lo the Love Dare. Oh, what? Well, yes. I couldn't remember. Yeah. yeah the, the Love, love Dare. dare. I yeah, did baby. receive that from I an undisclosed love your spouse. I dare from a, you from an undisclosed relative. I did get that as a present. And I didn't know if that nice. was an insult or just like, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so, uh, here you go. Good luck with everything. Uh, like I'm not having marital problem. What, what are you saying? I don't <laughs> I, notice um, too, on that note real quick. Can, can we as Christians just say, like, just say the unsaid part real quick? You don't have to put out promotional movie material with every movie you put out. Like, no, secular, secular movies don't do that. It's not like Die Hard came out, and then they came out with, like, a book on how to defend yourself, okay? That's not, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do. Although. <laughs> <laughs> Although. I would have bought it. I would buy that one. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, okay. Hey, can... okay. Correction. Maybe we're ahead of the curve. I don't... <laughs> yeah. If Bruce Willis came out with a self-defense book, you know, it would be a New York times bestseller. That's true. Okay. Don't even pretend. Okay. And like, and uh, the forward is Denzel Washington, right? I mean, what, movie, what were those two movies he was in too, where he was like that? <laughs> like he used a stapler um, to kill five people. Yeah, like yeah. what was it? <laughs> I don't know what that movie was. Oh, uh, started, I know it, what it is. Oh, it started with um, an E, I think. <sighs> Hold on. Uh, the uh, uh, Equalizer. 
Equalizer. There you go. Thank you, Google. Thank you, Google. All things being equal. <laughs> I remember watching that. It's a lot like watching, like, uh, okay, and just let me preface this. If you're going to, like, DM me, like, you should be watching this, you just take that DM and not send it. But, uh, it, like, John Wick, like, you're going, okay, like, how – there's no way – that you're going to do this. I'm not killing five people with a stapler. I sure ain't killing nobody with a pen. Like, <laughs> just like, just. The Joker did. The, well, it was a pencil. Like, yeah. yeah. So this is how bad, it, folks. Okay, here's the deal. This is how bad Christian movies are. We've wound up talking about Denzel Washington action <laughs> flicks. We just uh, just abandoned it all together. Like this isn't even worth the time. Hey, you see the equalizer? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I can there, watch you any know more what? biopics. There, there's <laughs> about Strobel. as there is about as much um, theology bound in the equalizer as there is in some of these Christian films. That's true. That's true. Now here, let me make a distinction because when I pulled this up, there are kind of like two Christian film areas so there's like like the left behinds the god is not dead and then there are the movies like the case for christ or i can only imagine or apparently jeremy camp mm -hmm. came out with one that i didn't know about called i still believe yeah that's uh, pretty new i haven't seen that one yeah well my wife's seen it she bought it the other day i haven't seen it um but so like those where would you clap like i feel like that's in a different genre well here i'll, I'll tell you why the the I can only imagine movie had a lot higher quality of production value, I feel, than, well, not totally, but <laughs> I say that and then I think about who was in it, but, <laughs> but it, it was better. Do you think there's any difference or no? And please be honest, because I, I enjoyed that. Um, I think, yes, but without a whole lot of conviction. Um, and maybe what, what I think is there are some of them that are, um, well, some of the ones that we've been talking about, right? Like the Omega code stuff, right? Um, that, that was made to cater to an incredibly specific audience. Oh yeah. That was niche. And, and it was not really made to make you think about stuff. It was sheer entertainment. Uh, I, I really think that, you know, like the, maybe they had different things in mind when they were making it, but, but as someone who's going to just consume that and watch it, it's really not going to be any different to me than watching the equal. You know what I mean? Than any other movie that is action in it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you're left with is a movie that isn't really, theologically accurate by any even if you're pre-millennialist this is a terrible <laughs> even the pre-builders are going oh right. my goodness this is oh, a horrible this is not an accurate representation of my beliefs <laughs> <This> is... <laughs> but, <laughs> but um but yeah i mean you're kind of left with just watching this to be entertained which doesn't happen which pushes you to the equalizer so yeah i'd say you last 15 minutes in the omega code before you right. go is there anything else yeah. on <laughs> yeah, please. If you're gonna rent it, make it like you're going in no, hey, to make fun of the movie. Hey, good okay? news. Both the Omega Code and the Omega Code Two full versions are on YouTube. You don't gotta rent it. Oh wow! All right. Well, yep. there you go. <laughs> you can take Save even they are like a few bucks. Even they're, they're like, no one's gonna buy this. Let's just put it online. <laughs> yeah, but the, so then I think though that there are like the. Um, uh, what's the case for Christ movie, for instance, mm -hmm. yep. there are some of those that actually do have some real significance, right. Mm -hmm. To the, the weight of what the movie is about and talking about. Um, but I think that we're kind of entering into that in secular movies as well, more than it probably used to be mm -hmm. like back in the day when um, uh, Bruce Willis was, about to fall off a building and he'd already had every bone in his body broken based on the last bit of the action and he still wins and beats it. I mean, that, that was sheer entertainment mm -hmm. period. It, there was no really other thing that you were getting from that, except I've got to be a detective when I grow up, you know, but, um, but now 
almost every Hollywood movie that gets put out has at least subliminal messages, mm -hmm. cultural messages. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that there are some lately Christian movies that are kind of doing that same thing. Even the God's not dead thing, like at some level, where it's kind of like Christianity is warring a little bit against some of the cultural ideas that are out there now. Mm -hmm. Whereas back in the day, it was like, I don't know. I mean, even if you tried to do it, the quality was so low and so much less than any secular quality Yeah. that, I mean, the only people that are going to watch this are a few people from church. That's it. Yeah. Whereas now we've got like even the movie Unplanned, okay? Uh, which is not all, seen. I that. mean, well, I, I haven't seen it either uh, to, I guess, put that out there, but, um, but I would like to, and uh, you know what movie I'm referring to? Yeah. It's a movie about abortion, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, these are movies with, with distinctive Christian values that are now kind of being put out to enter the culture war a little bit. So yeah. I do think there's a difference. Like if you're, if you're going to spend the time, making Christian art, Christian movies, Christian music, whatever that looks like with the word Christian before it, it, it should be for a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, like well, that. And I, I think to your point, the big difference is as you're saying that, what I'm thinking is that I think back in the day, like early nineties, early two thousands, it wasn't so apparent to the church, Christians within the church, I guess, more specifically that there was really a culture war. I don't think that that was really something that like was a big thing. I think the assumption was that for the most part, culture was with the church and the church was with culture and we were all going the same direction. I think that was, I mean, that's kind of the thing I remember growing up. Like you were told that like there were some like very few people that, you know, didn't like the church and da, 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 da. like that was kind of the vibe. Like we don't have to fight a culture war because the culture's with us. And then there was like a, a shift where I think it became much more of a realization, probably mid maybe mid to late 2000s where people were like, ah, actually, yeah, we're not like, it was, it was a distinct uh, maybe understanding that moralism and Christianity are not the same thing. Like being good and following Jesus are not synonymous. And then it became a little bit more apparent to people within the church. Oh, you're not really with us. We just happen to be on the same page on a couple of these issues. And then where that really started taking place, like, like for example, with unplanned or, uh, movies mm -hmm. that that tackle bigger cultural issues that we go oh we do actually need to speak a little bit more loudly into this culture because we 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 thought we were the same but then we came to this oh no we're not the same and now we have to speak to it a little bit more um and i think too another another thing to think about is some of these just like books or anything frankly mm -hmm. for that matter um or even preaching um there there are some movies that um, since that's what we're actually talking about, there there are some movies that um, are made for a distinctly Christian audience, for a distinctly mm -hmm. Christian purpose, like to build up the church with some yeah. whatever teaching or whatever it is. Um, and then there are some that are meant as evangelistic kind of things, like um, the case for Christ. To me, um, is more of I mean, the church obviously has a lot to, you know, uh, it's yeah. foundational, you know, uh, but. But to me, that's a movie that you could show an unbeliever, right? And it, it would have some good things yeah. come from it. Like there's some weight behind it. I can only imagine as another one. Yeah, I think that's that the biopics yeah. is why I would put them in a different category because those are, hey, this is actually, I mean, I'm sure there are things that are not included because of time or because of maybe, you know, production or whatever. But like, the, like you said, I think the reason they're more impactful is because they actually tell someone's true story of their testimony from you know, to Christ. So they're a lot more, not, not only relatable, but they're real. Like it's, this is what happened opposed to, for example, like some very straw man argument you would find in God is not dead, for example, like, okay, well, if you actually try that, that's not going to work really in real life. But for example, in, you know, I can only imagine this is his real struggle with trying to, you know, work through his, his issues he had with his dad or his issues with his mom or his issues with, you know, the church and what that looked like and that whole struggle. So um, I think that's helpful. Now I want to end with one. I, I need to ask you a question because I'm, I don't know if you saw this movie or not. Have you ever heard of the movie saved? Yeah. Okay. Did you see that? Have you ever seen that movie? 
I, it, man, it's been a long time. I don't remember tons and tons about gotcha. it, but, so but I yeah, think I've seen it. That's one of those movies that it may even be on your list that you pulled up, but it's, there's a whole nother genre too of, of people, for example, that have come out of the church that have deconstructed, that would consider themselves like ex evangelicals that make movies like sat satirical movies toward the church and saved is definitely in that category. But in that, in that same regard, the only reason I bring it up is because, you know, some people might watch that and not know it's not a, a, like because of the content covered, like they may not know, but it's one of those things that I think even when we're making fun of a mega code, which, Hey, <laughs> I think it deserves it. Uh, but when we're looking at movies like, you know, God is not dead, the Omega code saved, um, you know, fireproof, those sort of things. It's helpful to look at them and to at least say, okay, well, what can I understand from the, the landscape of Christian culture to pull from that? Because obviously if it's being made out of the church, then this is the assumption, like we talked about with, you know, with left behind, apparently that was the, that was the temperature of the room at the time, as far as theological belief. So what can we pull now from movies to get them more of a theological temperature of the room to more appropriately talk, you know, into the church about, okay, and to address theological issues. For example, this wasn't planned either. The shack is a perfect movie to say when that came out. Now it's an older movie. Yeah. It's not, not new, new, but it's one of those that you could, I know the, there was pastors at the time that they came out that used that movie to say, Hey, you've probably seen this. Let's go through this theologically, biblically, and see if this actually lines up or not. So, <clears throat> I mean, I think it's helpful as much as they're cringy or funny to watch uh, to actually say, okay, well, this is obviously the temperature of the room right now. So let's look at it and address it. That's also why I think saved is helpful because there's a lot of things in saved that are so cliche about the church, mm -hmm. but they're, the sad part is they're not super wrong. <laughs> At the time, those were very truthful things that were happening within the church. Um, so I think it's helpful to watch it, even though you can also be like, oh, ugh, why? <laughs> why was this ever made? Uh, anyway, that's my last thing. You got anything to wrap this wonderful episode up? I am not going to rap because I am not Carmen. We covered that last time. Um, in the house. Yeah, we need a riot, you know? Um, no, <laughs> I, I don't. I think that um, it is, I, I see the value. I'll say it this way. I, I see the value in Christian um, and gospel centered like art mm -hmm. in general right um it kind of invading the culture uh, around us at large and i mean even like painting right whatever yeah uh in general um i think that uh there there are ways of expression that the culture that we live in um uh, kind of unless unless the church steps into specific areas right um mm -hmm. we're probably not going to get you're not going to reach certain demographics and certain folks um and i i think even social media is an example of that oh right? yeah like uh i i i think uh, one of the issues is that historically, and we've seen it both last week and this week, and we'll continue to see it in the the coming the last two weeks that we'll do is um so often christians try to make a good alternative to something that's in the world right mm -hmm. and i don't think that that is like the the way to go um yeah and i just say that because uh like so we have uh god tube for instance have you ever heard of this I've heard of it. Okay. I've been yeah. there once and it doesn't run very well. At least the last time the, I was there. <laughs> the way that you said it says it all, right? Like the why not so this is the the bottom line of the idea. Why not um put your messages, your Christian whatever you want to do. Why not make those videos and put them on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Where you're going to instead of just reserving you know like resigning to the fact that i'm only going to reach into you know uh other christians mm -hmm. right there's a place for that it's church and stuff but um uh, but you know like we we should be 
intermingling with the, like Jesus ate with uh, sinners, right? On purpose, out loud on purpose in front of the religious people who thought he was crazy. So we need to, I, I think that we need to be a people who are about that, right? Yeah. Um, so that invading mean, instead of running. Right. That doesn't mean to be manipulative about it, but, but if, if we're, Jeff Vanderstelt says it this way, and I really love what he says, you're going to, you talk about most what you love most. Um, and that's true. You know, uh, grandparents talk all the time about their grandkids, right. Or, um, football, tell me that's not a thing, right? Like in American society, we talk about sports and stuff and we're obsessed with them and we cheer at those games. But when a baptism happens, we're like, yay, you know, yep. like, look, if heaven is roaring with praise because of something that just happened, mm -hmm. it's probably okay to super bowl it up in that place. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, no, I think invade rather than oh, we could do a whole episode on this. Oh my goodness. No, yeah, I totally agree. Sure. I mean, okay. I'm just going to shut up because I'll talk for 20 minutes. So, Hey guys, <laughs> tune in next month. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The, the theme obviously is invade. Don't run, but we'll talk about that a couple more times. We got two more episodes this month to bring you amazing Christian things. Next week, we're going to be looking at Christian products that are in the market, mm -hmm. specifically Christian products. So we'll see you then. Talk to you later. Bye -bye. Peace.